Hello and welcome back to the Toronto Website Developer.com. I am PD Orski, the Toronto Website Developer specializing in Drupal. And in this video tutorial, we're going to take off on our slideshow that we started off in video tutorial one. And we are going to finish it off with some CSS that kind of makes this ugly pager that we have prettier into this pager that we have here on the Kings of Chaos, where we've got a title off to the one side and we've got images for our pager rather than numbers. So let's dive right into it and get started. Um, on this video tutorial, we've obviously been using the bar tick theme here. And because we're going to be doing CSS, one of the things that we have to do is move the Bartik theme uh, into a custom theme folder so that we're actually not modifying Drupal core. So I'm into my uh, my site structure here and I'm going to grab Bartik, copy it, and I'm going to step back. And I'm going to go to sites, all, oops, themes, and I'm going to paste it here. And when I paste it, I'm going to rename this because it's no longer going to be Bartik. It has to be a unique theme. I'm actually going to call this TWD Bartik. Now when I open this up, first thing I'm going to do, this info file is now TWD. And I'm going to copy this. I'm going to need it throughout. And so in the info file, let's go ahead and we'll open that up in our text editor. So. This is no longer Bartik, this is TWD Bartik, and TWD override of the Bartik theme, a flexible recolorable theme with multi-regions. And I guess I didn't need to get rid of that comma. Um, but there we go, we're using core version 7.0. One thing that we're gonna do, because we're using Bartik, and Bartik's gonna come out with some updates, uh, theoretically, we don't want to not be able to update our theme. So uh, in order to do that, we're going to add a CSS file here, which is going to call be called TWD overrides.css. And we'll add all of our overrides to Bartik in there. That way we don't modify any of the CSS. And we just got to be conscious if we're ever updating this theme uh, that we've modified the, uh, the info file. So we'll get rid of this information down here because that comes from Drupal specifically related to Bartik. Save this and we're good to go. We can now close this file. And so Next thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look at template.php. And so if you're familiar with theming, we've got all of these pre-process uh, functions as well as theme overrides. And the way that you do that is, you know, you implement hook pre-process um, or theme pre-process, those kind of things. And so that hook or theme is always referred to what theme you're in. So Bartik's obviously Bartik underscore and then whatever they're doing. So we need to replace those with our name. So it's no longer Bartik. It's TWD Bartik, so we'll go ahead and replace all. We should get 10 occurrences. And if we briefly scan through, you'll see here we've got TWD underscore process, TWD Bartik underscore process. So it looks like we're good. We've replaced everything that we needed to. We can save this and close it up. Now when we go back to our appearance here for our site, go check out our themes. We can scroll down and we'll see we've got TWD Bartek 7.14. We obviously have the same screenshot and the reason why we have that is because if we look at our, our theme, we've got the screenshot here, we didn't update that or our logo. So if you're obviously doing this on your live site, you might want to do that uh, and customize it, especially if this is for a client. So we can go ahead and disable Bartek and you'll notice when we go back to our homepage, that nothing on the look and feel has actually changed because all that we've done is we've copied Bartik over to a new structure and it's now a new theme, but we haven't actually changed any CSS. So we still have this ugly pager. Let's get started on that. We're going to open up the Chrome developer tools and we do that by control shift I. Um, and we use this magnifying glass and take a look at the title here. We'll start with this first. So what we want to do is we want to have this moved over into the side here at the bottom of the image. Uh, you know, with a nice kind of transparent white background that kind of lets the image shine through, but also allows us to read the title that we're looking at. So in order to do that, once we have our TWD tools open, we're going to look at the views field title. And so for this element style, let's go ahead and we'll start adding a few things. So we know that we want it to be at the bottom of the image in the slideshow. So that's going to make our position absolute. It's not going to change. And that's going to be relative to the, the div, the container div. And so the bottom of this, let's make this 35 pixels and we'll see how that lines up. And so the right is going to be zero pixels because we want it to hug the border. And font size is going to be 20. And then we want the text align 
to be centered. The reason why we're not seeing any changes below is because we're actually addressing only one element. And so uh, all the other elements aren't changing. So once we actually get back to our first one, we'll see it kind of moved over. So um, that's why if you're wondering, uh, the background color is going to be white and we'll make the opacity 0.5. Uh, obviously that's a CSS3 attribute. So uh, if you're using another browser that doesn't support that, you won't see that and you need a workaround, but that's beyond the scope of this. And I think we saw briefly, if I hover over one, you'll see that we've got the title that shows up at the bottom. Uh, we've got our CSS looking good. So we can go ahead and copy that into our CSS file. The reason why I do this through developer tools is because I like to work live on the site. Um, and when I say live, I mean, see my changes actually occur on the site. Uh, but if I were to reload the page, I would lose them. So we've got to copy all of this, go back into our site structure. And if you remember, we created our own CSS file. So, uh, or we told our theme about our own CSS file. So we have to actually create that. And that's TWD overrides. CSS. I've spelt that wrong. I hope it was overrides and not override, but we'll find out soon enough. So let's open that up in our text editor. We'll paste this. And obviously we don't have any classes. So we'll step back into our developer tools and we'll know that we're going to address the views field title. So let's go ahead and go views field title at our containers here. But obviously, without another class specifically identifying this view that we're creating, we would affect every view's title that was ever created on our site. So that's a problem. So if we step back into our developer tools, we can scroll up and we're going to look for a class that applies to this entire view. Um, and views is pretty good about, you know, kind of adding a ton of CSS classes. So when we minimize this in our, uh, in our CSS structure, we see that this one div contains all of our view. So view front page slideshow is the name front page slideshow is obviously the name of our view and uh, view will add view dash to it so that seems like a good candidate for us to go ahead and use that uh, in our CSS file so what we'll do is step back here we're going to grab this now the one caveat here is if you had a view that had multiple uh, different like pages blocks whatnot you would be hitting each one of those and you might want different CSS for that so if that's the case, you would want to use one of these other ones, view display ID page or view ID front page slideshow, right? And those are specific to what you're working on. So uh, just bear that in mind if you've gone ahead and you've created multiple blocks, pages, whatnot. Uh, this, you would have to change that up. But for our purposes, we don't have to. So we can go ahead and reload this. And we see now that our title for every one of our different images uh, is all showing up on the right. So that's good. So that's step one. Step two now is to actually start hitting this pager because these numbers uh, lined up, you know, in columns, a little bit ugly. So if we step back to our developer tools, use our magnifying glass, we can see here that we've got the div, um, the div of the field counter, but it's obviously uh, taking up the span of the image. Uh, whereas we only want it to be kind of itself, right? So we clearly it's a eligible candidate for a float. So we're going to float left. We're going to add some padding to this. 10 pixels top and bottom. And sorry, that should be five pixels left and right. And we're going to add a background to this. So before I add the background, just going to highlight. In our TWD Bartik, we've got an images folder. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to add two images there. And these are going to be for our navigation. So I'm just going to paste them in here. So we've got our active button and we've got our inactive button. So obviously going back to the CSS here when we're doing our background, let's just have our site there so we can see what's going on. Background, so we're going to add URL, it's going to be dot dot. So we're going up a folder because we're right now, this is be looking at the CSS folder. So we'll go up, then we'll go into images. Then we're going to call this page nav inactive, right? And we can override the inactive when we're actually active. And I'll show you how to do that as well. So it's going to be top left, no repeat. 
So within the container, it will be shown in the top left portion of it and it won't repeat the image. So we can go ahead and we don't actually see this show up because it's grabbing an image and we just added that image. So we'll copy these, go back to our CSS file, paste that and obviously we've got a only effect of view front page slideshow. And we know that we are looking at the views content counter. So we want, actually, I don't think we want content. Do we want content counter or field counter? We want field counter. So let's go ahead and go field counter. Close that up and we're gonna indent these. Save that, let's reload our page. And we now have them all lined up one after another. Obviously we still have numbers, which are pretty ugly. Uh, so we've got a problem with our background image. And the reason why we have a problem with our background image is because we didn't add .png. So let's go ahead and save that. Reload this page. And we see all of our images showing up above the numbers, great. But what we don't have is a black image to highlight the fact that we're on an active image. Right now we have no idea what we're looking at. So in order to do that, like I said, we're gonna go ahead and override. But we need something to override. So if we look at our developer tools and if we step back, and we take a look at our slideshow controls here. One of the things that we notice, but it's very subtle, is that every time an image is active, it gets the class active. So going up to one now, we see that it's active there. And if we wait for it, we see that it changes and there's active there. So obviously a good candidate for us to override. So we can go ahead and go dot active dot field counter. And we'll take this and our background oops, is not going to be inactive. It's going to be active. So we'll save that again. We're going to reload our page. And we'll see that it's actually pulling in a white image, not our black image. Uh, and the reason for that is because when I tested this out, I had a white image. And so that is a problem. So if I clear my caches, step back to this, reload my page, you'll see that I've got a black image now. So we're good. Now, last thing that we have to do, these numbers, obviously ugly and we don't want them down there. That's the reason why we have these nice images that we created. And then actually I lied, second last thing we have to do. So let's open up our tools here and we'll go back to this. We'll see our number. And so we've got our views field counter, we've got our views content counter. So what we're gonna add to this content is display none and that will hide the actual number, but obviously we cut off the image, so that's a problem. So let's go back. And we don't want our active. Clearly we're working on active right now. So once that changes, we come here, we'll add a width of 10px. And so we see now we have a nice looking five's gone, but the image is still there. So if we know that works, let's step back into our CSS. And we're going to take this, copy that down there. But before we get forget, we're going to add a width of 10 px to the actual field counter. This is going to be content counter. And we're going to display none. And we'll go ahead and save that. Now I know for some uh, people like strict CSS, this obviously still loads the number, but we're just not displaying it. So if you looked in the actual uh, developer tools, we could go here. We still see we get the content five. Some people don't like that. Um, they figure if you're not printing, if you're not using the number, don't don't print it. Um, so if that's the case, you can go into views overrides and you know eliminate this with a with a theme override or in your template.php, just not print the number. It, it's a bit beyond the scope of this. Um, I don't really care because it's only a number. If we were actually printing out some kind of content and I didn't want it there, yeah, I would do that. But for this case, number, this is a nice simple fix. I'd rather go with this. If you have something that's a little bit better, uh, a little bit more standard that you think people should be using, please post a comment, let us all know. Um, happy to hear about it. So the final thing that we have to do, obviously this is off to the left. Some people might like that. I don't, I liked it in the center when we were looking at Kings of Chaos. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. 
In order to do that, make things accurate, we'll bust out our uh, pixel ruler here. And we'll see our, our actual image is about 700, right? So we want that right in the middle of the image. And if we hover over here, we see that our uh, pager for, you know, plus or minus is about 100 pixels. So in order to do that, we're going to open up our developer tools. And we're going to take a look at the div that encompasses the counter, if I can get to it. Obviously can't. But if I look at my developer tools, I collapse everything. I see that the entire slideshow controls all fall within view slideshow controls bottom. So that's good. Nice class we've got there. So we'll add a margin left 300 pixels. And that puts us right in the center. Now, obviously, we're going to go into our CSS file. But before we do that, we want to grab this class. View front page slideshow. Add that in. Margin left 300 pixels. Go ahead and save that. Reload the page. And boom, that's it. Our slideshow is done. We've got a pretty crazy looking slideshow. Nice images. Um, you remember in the first tutorial, we went ahead and we got the views module. We got the um, view slideshow module. We got the libraries module. We got the jQuery plugin. We enabled all of those. We went, we created an image pre-style. Uh, obviously these were massive, so we cropped uh, and scaled them. So they all look good. Then with our CSS, moved our title over, made it look a little bit uh, cleaner there with uh, some opacity on the background. And then created our nice slideshow controls here that are images and we can scroll through each one of the pictures of Bailey Susie um, all throughout. But that's it. Uh, pretty simple, pretty straightforward. I mean, in total, I think this video tutorial uh, series, the two of them were 30 minutes. So 30 minutes and you've got a pretty slick looking slideshow on your front page. Hopefully this helped. Leave a comment, let me know, and we'll see you in the next video tutorial.